So wait a second. Are you saying that my brain development is dependent on my bacteria being there under the age of one while my brain is still developing and it actually has an influence on my brain development? The studies have been shown. Yes, 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 yes. So welcome back. Just to summarize what happened in the first portion, I talked about the LPS and the inflammation that's occurring in the body, either because we have the wrong bacteria, and the word I'm going to use is dysbiosis, and I'm going to talk more about this. So with that, we covered. Now I'm going to talk about how did the bacteria get there in the first place and what's wrong with them? What's wrong with your gut bacteria right now? Okay, so you said there's 100 trillion of them sitting around over there. So how did they get there in the first place? How come they're not everywhere else? Well, they are everywhere. So let's go back in history. So bacteria were here for billions of years before the mammalians came about. And our very design had bacteria in it. They were part of our, our development as we are today. And that's why we only have 21,000 human genes. Did you know that the fly has more, more genes than we do. The worm has more genes than the human. Oh, wait, 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 what do you mean? You mean to say that an earthworm has more genes than you? And then says yes. Well, then how am I able to do everything that I'm able to do? I'm a human being. Yes, because you outsourced a lot to your bacteria. What do you mean outsourced it to the bacteria? What that means is that you are utilizing their genetic ability and their quick turnover and changes in their genetics that occurs in the bacteria to your advantage. Now, how did I discover and read all this? It's because I figured that all these chemicals in the body, where do they all come from? Is it all that I'm eating? Or is it all that I'm making? No, we realize that the bacteria are making a lot of this stuff. It's the bacteria. We've outsourced everything. They started outsourcing way before we started outsourcing. So that gave us the advantage that we didn't have to, because of our long lifespan as well, wait for beneficial mutations. The bacteria are mutating practically every 24 hours. So if there's a change in the environment and you're adapting to it, your bacteria are far better able to adapt to it because of the rapid turnover. The, the lifespan of a bacteria is only a matter of hours or days at the most. So they are more likely to have mutations that are going to be either beneficial or not beneficial to us. So the bacteria have been with us all along. But wait a second, when I'm born, I have no bacteria. None. None whatsoever. Well, the data now shows a little bit of bacteria in, even in the uterus. Um, but it's insignificant, and your gut definitely has hardly any bacteria in them when you are born. So where did you get the bacteria from? Well, in a normal delivery, you come through the birth canal, and mom already has all the bacteria there. Now, it's funny that those bacteria are to populate your gut, but you would think that that population is very different. Did you know that in the last months of, of uh, pregnancy, the entire bacterial flora in the, in the birth canal changes, more lactobacillus, for example, because the mom is actually exporting bacteria and changing the population in the birth canal so that when you come out, you're going to be bathed in these new bacteria that she made, especially for you, especially for your gut specially designed for you to match also your genetics. So as you come through the birth canal, you, you, you then populate yourself. You populate your skin, your nose, your eyes, your ears, and of course your gut. And now these bacteria get in into your gut. Second thing, mom, through breastfeeding, gives you further bacteria. This is actually bacteria in milk, mother's milk. Most people don't know that, but it's true. There are bacteria in there. And they also contain these oligosaccharides. So what are oligosaccharides? They are very complex carbohydrate molecules in mother's milk. Why? You can't digest it. I can't digest it. Nobody can digest it. The baby can't digest it. So why is that in the mother's milk? Well, it's not for you. It's for your bacteria. So your bacteria feed on those, pro those uh, molecules 
because you're encouraging the growth of certain types of bacteria. So you attract and keep the bacteria you want in your gut, depending on what you eat. That's why fiber is so good for you as an adult. Because when you eat the right fiber, you're going to attract the right population of, of I mean, that's nature. You give it the food, the right bugs will come over there. So you foster the growth of a good bacterial population in your gut. So this population, which is trillions and trillions and trillions, there's going to be good, good guys, bad guys. It's a mixture of everybody. It's what we call the landscape. The landscape is very varied. So the good take care of the bad guys, and they are all kept under control because there needs to be a balance. It's not just one species. There's multitude of species in the gut. So that's mostly how we get. Now, if you get a C-section, you're a little bit of a disadvantage. Why? Because you're not really getting all that uh, bacterial uh, load onto you. And next thing is, you know, caressing a baby, holding a baby, breastfeeding the baby, family members coming, touching the baby. You are transferring your, your familial microbes to that uh, baby. Now, why is that important? That's important because the data now shows that you actually make proteins in your gut that get secreted by your gut lining to attract the right bacteria. So the right bacteria there, you already have the genetics for those bacteria that you're not going to fight them. So you already programmed for a certain bacterial population that these guys are all my friends and I'm not going to mount a response against them. How did it happen? That happened in your genetics. Mom's genetics, dad's genetics, already all built in there. That these guys are all my buddies. Do not attack them. And then those bugs come in because they were persuaded to come in because of the food that you gave them through the milk, as well as the proteins that you produced in your gut lining. So there's a balance there. There's a symbiotic relationship. So what is this called? This is called a commensal relationship between the gut bacteria and the human being. So now we say, okay, so all my friends have arrived now, and I'm going to work with them, together with them, to have the chemistry that is needed to make this baby into a functional adult. Okay? So that's how the bacteria get in there. So if we take a course of antibiotics right at time of childbirth, has that been shown to have an effect on the baby? The answer is yes. Does it have an effect on the mom? Yes. Are you creating perturbations that are going to be bad? That Wait a second, I'm interfering with the bacterial population. And is that of any consequence? And the answer is a resounding yes. Now we're getting into this in great detail, but does that mean that if you have had five courses of antibiotics before the age of one, and you've practically destroyed your bacterial flora through these antibiotics, for example, or eating the wrong foods in the first one year or two years of your life, hmm? if you're not fostering the growth of the right, has that any long-term consequence? And the answer are resounding yes. There's a high incidence of asthma, autoimmune diseases, rheumatoid arthritis, even type 2 diabetes, when these kids who have a disturbed microbiome from the age of six months or a year, out to 35 years. Now, obviously, you know, we're studying these patients as we go along, but in rats, you can study this much easier because they have a shorter lifespan. In animal models, three antibiotic courses within the first year of life, the equivalent of the first year of life, will have a lifelong effect on that baby's microbiome. See, there's certain keystone species which are going to be destroyed with antibiotics or lifestyle. And sometimes they never come back after a course of antibiotics. And by the way, most of these antibiotics are for viral diseases. Because we are compassionate physicians. We're concerned that we don't want to miss a bacterial infection in that baby. But even the CDC has said that up to three quarters of antibiotics are really not for bacterial infections. They're for viral infections and probably should not be prescribed. So when you look at the growth of this diseases of modern man, maybe the roots are from the time we are born. Not only that, but when these kids who have a depleted or a microbiome that is not so diverse, when they, when they go on to have their babies, that mom now has a baby herself. She's going to have a more 
depleted microbiome to hand over to her child. And when that child has a baby, there's even less microbiome for the next generation. And that's been shown over and over again, now not only in humans, but definitely in animal studies. That scares us because we're losing our keystone main bacteria that we're supposed to have in our gut. So does that have any consequences? Yes, not only these, kind of these diseases, but even brain development. So wait a second. Are you saying that my brain development is dependent on my bacteria being there under the age of one while my brain is still developing and it actually has an influence on my brain development? The studies have been shown, yes, 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 yes. The germ-free mice, if you in introduce bacteria after a certain period of time and they've missed that period, that critical period when they should have had the bacteria in their gut from day one, those mice are never the same again. So developmentally, it appears that these bacteria affect our physiology, they produce certain chemicals that then affect our brain development as well. So it's a, it's a very complicated area of, of, of understanding that we need to be worried about what's happening to us now. Okay, I got coronary artery disease and I have hypertension, I have diabetes, I'm, I'm gonna change my bacterial flora, I'm gonna eat right, I'm gonna do what Dr. J tells me. Yeah, that's fine, but what about your children? What are we doing to them? What are we, are we giving them the, the wrong foods? And then we worry about the atherosclerosis when they're 35 and 45 years old and they already come to me with coronary calcium in them? We should be working on the kids now to prevent them from getting heart disease when they grow old. And part of this is they need to foster this relationship with the bacteria. The way you're supposed to be, you're a symbiotic organism. So you need that symbiosis. This is what I'm trying to to do, to make people, not just with disease change, but change the next generation. Because if we do not do this, the chronic diseases are going to bankrupt, forget the country, it's going to bankrupt the whole world. It's, it's going to be non-sustainable. But you may live longer, but your quality of life is going to be so poor. So these gut bacteria play a crucial role in our development. I already showed you how lipopolysaccharides affects you. So now I'm going to tell you a little bit about something else called um, short-chain fatty acids, which the bacteria produce in the gut. And we'll talk about the chemistry that's going on with the bacteria. What are they making? I told you they're making chemicals. Well, what are those chemicals? How do they work? Uh, where do they go? Uh, we'll cover that in the next portion of this talk. If you like this video, then this one is strongly recommended for you. But if you want to see the whole series, please click here.